Hi, everybody. Hey. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Wait, did we bring the girl? <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Yes, I'm I sitting next to Freddy Krueger over here. Yes. I mean, I wasn't going to say anything, but okay. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know, my name is Jay. I'm the events manager for Sentai and High Dive. And Hi, I do panels. Hi, Hi Jay. Jay. What's up? Yeah, this was a horrible, horrible idea of me with them, but we're going to get through this, maybe. We'll see. But I will let everyone introduce themselves, because then I don't have to. This Jay guy's really lazy, isn't he? I know. What's he getting paid for? Let's start, let's start ladies first. Oh. Okay, my name... Oh, wait. Lex. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's a tough crowd. Uh, I'm Michelle Ruff. I play Fujiko Mine. Who's next? Oh, I guess I'll go next. Hi, I'm Richard Epcar, and I play Jigen. I should say usually I play Jigen. <laughs> Sometimes I play some other characters. My name's Tony Oliver, and I play Lupin. No. no. He's a liar. 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 My name is Doug Erholtz, and I play Zenigata. Then he got a DeVita. My name is Tony Oliver, and I play Lupin. So. Yay! <laughs> My name is Tony Oliver, and <laughs> no, I'm Lex Lang, and I play Goimon. Woo! Yeah. Okay, goodbye, everybody. Woohoo! Woohoo! Thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure how I end up with like three or four Tony Olivers, but I'll take it. Right. My name is Tony Oliver, Real. and I play Freddy Krueger. <laughs> She's going through some things. <laughs> I know, I was thinking that. With a real Tony Oliver, please stand up. Right. There was a um, show. My name is Tony Oliver. And... <laughs> so to get started with our questions, I will start with Richard, since oh, you're Jesus. next to me. Also, I get to look at Richard all the, this panel, so that's great. Right. I'm so sorry for you. Did he sound sincere? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it beats looking in the mirror, so we're there. <laughs> <laughs> so, everyone, Richard, how did you get started voice acting? I can stare in your days all How long day. do you have? <laughs> Does he have to remember back that far? <laughs> Was there automatic cars? Like, when I left the womb, Most. I started my voice acting. That's something, back in that's something they, never, they never ask us, is right. it? I don't um, okay, how I got started. This is how I got started. It doesn't mean this is how everybody got started, but this is how I got started. I went to LA to be an on camera actor, and I did a lot of soaps and TV shows and some movies and things like that. And my wife, Ellen Stern, who you may know or may not know, is also a voice actor, actress, director. And she was doing a uh, movie for this company, and they had another movie that they did, and they didn't like any of the actors in it, and they wanted to replace all of their voices. So they had auditions, and she said, can, you, can I bring my boyfriend, who was me at the time? That's how long ago it was. And uh, I went in there, and the guy said, have you done this before? I said, I've done it a million times. I never did it before in my life. And uh, I, I nailed it, and it was uh, partially because uh, I'm a drummer, and there's a real rhythm to this stuff. And you'll notice most of us on the panel, we have some musical stuff in our background. And uh, there, is a, there is a rhythm to it. So I, I got that, and I got the lead in that movie, and then from that I did other stuff, and from that I went into Robotech, and then the rest is history. And I have not stopped working since that. So it's been a, a real blessing and a wonderful thing. So thank you for having us. Yeah. Doug? Does everyone answer that question? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Freddy Krueger, how did so you get kind into of, it? Well, I was in this movie called Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> <laughs> now, much like Richard, I came out to be uh, out to Los Angeles to be an on-camera actor, and I worked for a, a production company in the meantime called Saban Entertainment. You guys ever heard of them? Yeah. yeah. And I knew a couple of the girls in casting, and they said, oh, this is back did. when I had a, a ponytail, rocker ponytail. And I believe, uh, Lex, you had a rocker ponytail back yeah, then? something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they said, well, do you sing? And I said, of course, you've seen my ponytail, right? And they said, yes, of course. <laughs> so I sang a song for Mary, Kate, and Ashley Olsen. Not for them, like, personally, but um, for one of their movies. 
And that's how I got started. And Is it then one of the holiday songs? It was Mummies Have Mummies too. Oh, I wrote their holiday songs. I'm glad you didn't write this piece of shite because it was awful. Yeah. <laughs> but shite? if you guys are really curious, it's out there. It's called Mummies Have Mommies Too. And it's not me singing. Well, it's me singing, but someone else uh, lip syncs me. So. I did one called Duties Have Daddies. I don't right? Know. Right? <laughs> so that's how I got my start. And here I am with these guys. Nice. With Michelle Ruff. Michelle Ruffens- Ruffenstein. <laughs> Ruffenstein. Uh, <laughs> it was shortened. I never knew uh, that. I, right. It's not. But <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, So how did I get started? I used to be behind the camera. I went to Michigan State University. and uh, cool. uh, I did too. Uh, oh, Spartans! Um, but I was uh, studying to be film and TV and a uh, radio producer. So I was working for uh, Michigan Public Broadcasting, and I was actually the office manager at an agency in Lansing, Michigan. And my boss set me up for an audition. He's like, I have this audition, and I think you should go up for it. It's this voiceover thing. And I'm like, no. And he's like, yeah, just do it, just do it. So I go in, I do the audition, and I don't hear anything. And like a week later, I'm in the car with my roommate, and I hear the spot on the radio, and it's me. <laughs> and Gina looks at me, and she's like, Is, isn't that you? And I'm like, yeah, they stole my audition <laughs> without booking me and put it on the radio. I mean, this you know, this was like back in nineteen. And she still hasn't been paid. Well, I There's did. No I had not been paid, like so business. I called my boss and I said, um, "I just heard that spot that I auditioned for. It was for like Michigan at Risk. It was like buckle up, be safe. You know, it was like a PSA kind of thing. So I got paid, but that was my first job ever. Did they pay you finally? They did. Thank God. A hundred dollars. Ooh, noise. I was going to go dollars. beat him up for you, Michelle. Yeah, come on. I'd beat him up for ah. you. So that's how I started. Sweet. Uh, I started as a theater actor in Los Angeles, which meant I was making no money because uh, there's no work out there. At least there wasn't at the time. But I was doing a lot of musicals. I was trying to break into the music industry as well because I write, I'm a balladeer, that sort of thing. And none of that was panning out. And so I was uh, str- uh, struggling to find something. And I answered an ad in back, what was called Dramalog then, but it's called Backstage West now. And, um, and uh, looking for someone who was over 18 who could sound under 18 because of the labor laws and, and had experience. So much like Richard, I lied. And uh, <laughs> told what? him I had some experience. Technically, I did. I had, I had spoken one line of ADR into a moviola for a student film that I was in at, SC, at USC. But that was it. So, uh, and, um, and they brought me in, and it was a Louis Mall film. It was a background doing Wallace. It was all the background stuff. Um, and Louis Mall films, if you've never seen one, are so depressing, you want to jump into an active street <laughs> after you've watched one. <laughs> uh, but they liked what I did, and they yanked me out of the booth and auditioned me for something else, and that was a, sh- a movie called The Sea Prince and the Fire Child, which is the first anime I ever did, and uh, I got the lead. Silly <laughs> people, they thought I had experience. Uh-huh. And, um, and, but it, it ended up on television, and that ended up uh, getting, uh, generating a phone call from a guy named Bob Barron, who was looking for or somebody to do this thing Burn. with Macross. Burn. And that turned into Robotech, which was my first series, and I have never looked back after that. Wow. Nice. So, yeah. <clears throat> Let's see, I got started. I was uh, coming down off of Mount Everest thinking about my job <laughs> as a shuttle test pilot. Right. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I uh, grew up doing theater in high school and in college, and after the college, I did some on-camera work in Los Angeles, and I had a friend of mine who I met on one of the films, and he was doing a movie up in Vancouver. So I went to visit and hang out with him, and one of the actresses that was in that movie was a lady named Amy Jo Johnson, who played the Pink Power Ranger. I don't know if you remember her. Um, yes, Amy Jo. Um, and we had all gone out to dinner, and was, as I was coming back, I was doing some impersonations, and you know, I used to do stand-up comedy with impersonations in it, and she was laughing and said, you know what, you'd be a great voice actor. And I was like, I have no idea what that is. Most of the cartoons that I watch have very little dialogue. At the time, video games had like no dialogue in them. Anime hadn't started, really, so I'm like, what do you mean? What, what, what is that, like commercials on 
you know, the radio, TV, and she said, yeah, that, but I work on a show called The Power Rangers, and they have a loop group, which does like all the running away from the big monsters and stuff, uh, and you'd be great for that. So I went, I auditioned, and I was part of this loop group for Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and then I ended up getting a part of uh, Rygog in Power Rangers Turbo, and uh, Lara Go, the little wizard, if any of you have seen that movie or, or the TV show, and that's kind of where it started, and then it all kind of took off. At the, same, at the same time, I met my wife, who's Sandy Fox, who's also a voice actress. She's in Sailor Moon and a bunch of other stuff, Betty Boop. And uh, she helped me get started uh, as well. I think I directed your first session. You might have. Yeah. yeah, I think you probably did. Yeah. So that's how it happened. So you can thank the Pink Ranger. I can thank the Pink Ranger. The my Pink wife Ranger. and the Pink that's Ranger. Cool. Wait, you were a shuttle tester? Yeah. <laughs> a shuttle pilot. I did not know that. That's what I, I like I did about not you, Richard. Know you believe everything. Yeah. <laughs> so, our next question, I'll start with... It was with a shuttle to the airport, by the way, that oh, you had taken, you know, if you didn't want to drive. <laughs> that makes they more sense. They need people to test for that? Yeah. <laughs> Starting with Tony... Crash test dummy. What has it been like to work on something so iconic as Loop on the Third? Uh, it's, it's been uh, surprising. Um, I, I, I thought, honestly, I thought we were done with the show about 10 years ago because uh, nothing had happened and there had been a couple Tony. of video games and a couple of movies after the series, after we did uh, the Red Jacket series. And uh, I thought that was, uh, we were done. And so when things were, started showing up again a couple of years ago, it was, it was delightful and surprising. And now uh, it's, it's very interesting to me that after all of the parts that I played in, 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 in my career, it, it, it looks like Lupin is going to end up being the most enduring and important career, uh, jo uh, part I've played in my career. So for me, it's, uh, it's a thrill to be here and to be back and be doing more stuff. And thank you guys for all that. So. Yeah. And we thank you as well. Anyone else would like to add to that? Yeah, I'd just like to add that, uh, you know, when, when we started doing this show, uh, I really loved it. I fell in love with it, and I thought, wow, this is such a fun show. And at the time, we were doing a, the Red Jacket series, which was from the 70s, and it, it was kind of an old, well, we were like in the 80s or something. doing. Yeah, that. it was very much Cold War yeah, It was uh, like comedy. really kind of looked funky and... And uh, anyway, but I loved it. I loved the characters. I thought, I hope I get to work on, you know, a newer version of this someday. Well, be careful what you wish for, because, oh, my God, we've just, there's so much loop on stuff we're doing now. It's insane. And by the way, I cast all these guys. Yeah. I was, yeah, I was, I was the one that cast. Say. I directed the first Richard one. Richard is the reason why I'm here. Because yeah. I knew they would be great. And what a great cast they are. And I still think the best cast of all. So. <laughs> Well, let me let me add to that because if you like the Red Jacket series, you need to thank Richard. He's the one that made it funny. Oh, thank uh, you. We our scripts were okay, but he made them funny. He made them work, and we had a lot of fun. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Tony. I have to say, like, I mean, I've known all these people for quite a long time. You and mean these people? These yeah. people, <laughs> these people, um, getting to work with this cast for as long as we've been together is just, I mean, it really doesn't happen very often. So, it's true. and on top of it being a, a part of such an iconic franchise that is so beloved all over the world, I mean, I just, I, I know we all feel very, very fortunate. I just, I'm super grateful. And, um, you know, getting to play Fujiko is pretty amazing. <laughs> she's pretty great. Yes, yeah, uh, she's she pretty is. awesome. Hard to beat. I'd say she's gotten a little sexy over the years. You think so? I think so. From uh, yeah, oh, from the for very sure. beginning. From are you the kidding very me? Very beginning, like Lupin the Third, the first, the movie that just came out. Wow, um, she looks uh, amazing. <laughs> I want to say how much I love this show because I'm the new guy. <laughs> uh, kind of. Kind of. Um, I replaced Dan Lorger, who was the original Zenigata with this cast, and um, we've done a couple since then, so I'm, uh, I'm feeling like I'm finally one of the crew. So you are absolutely Thanks for inv crew. inviting me, guys. I you're rocking it, man. You got you invited to the party. I will say we went to a we went to a screening in Burbank a few weeks ago. They had a, a little event there, and and when you shouted out "Lupin," the entire audience went nuts. Yeah. What so do you they, mean like this? Lupin. <laughs> <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> 
We usually have again. To, we usually have to put him like three blocks down the street to, to do this line because he blows out the the equipment every time. Right, right. The audio guys love you. <laughs> well, since we're recording from home, yeah, yeah he's got to be his own audio guy. Richard's like, turn it down, turn your game down, turn it down, a little more, I'm a little more. Facing the opposite direction. <laughs> You're outside of your booth with the door closed. Exactly. Can you go across the street and do right. it, please. <laughs> My son's outside going, what are you doing, Daddy? <laughs> and who is this Lupin? <laughs> well, starting with Doug, since he's the newest, how did you approach developing the character, the voice, and all that goes along with it? Because I know it's been a minute for Richard. <laughs> um, well, so, you know, Rich was like, hey, we need this role cast. And um, you played me a little bit of uh, what Dan had done. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I think I based my performance more on um, the Japanese actor, the deeper voice one. I know there have been a several. We've noticed there's been a couple yeah. of variations, but... Um, There's the one guy go... Dee, 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 dee. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, I mean, I would say that I base this guy on a, you know, kind of a New York gumshoe. I mean, he's... Uh, he feels right at home here in New York, so I think uh, this is kind of where his, yeah, his, his core comes from. But yeah, I mean, it's mm. a fun role. I get to yell my head off and scare the shit out of my child. It's great. Good times. <laughs> Living the dream. Tony, Michelle, Richard, any other thoughts? Lex, sorry. It's all right. <laughs> You're far away. I'm far Hello! <laughs> um, yeah, for me, it was interesting because at first I wanted to do Goemon, you know, instead of a nice, deep voice Goemon. I wanted to go, hello, my name is Goemon. <laughs> they didn't want that. And then, um, <laughs> and then when I was doing Goemon, actually, honestly, um, I wanted to do a much bigger version of it. Like if there was a fire going on in, the, in you know, wherever they were, I wanted Goemon to be like, we must leave now. But they were like, no, hold on a sec. Let's just, everything is flat. It's got to be like, there is a fire, Lupin. <laughs> we best leave, you know? <laughs> Wouldn't be the same if you didn't do no, it that way. No, <laughs> and so, uh, you know, I fought it at first because I wanted to actually, you know, try to put more energy and, and emotion into it. But, you know, the fabulous director, Richard, was like, look, let's, I have a vision, you know? And, like, we kept going on, like, really zen and really sound. He gave you a lot of ambient, too. A lot of ambient yes. and, uh, no, but it was, it was really serene, in the performance, but when you see it against all the other characters that are so flamboyant and have such great character, it works. And so I'm grateful for that, and that's how we approached it. Oh, a series looking for something. I said, the series, and all of a sudden my watch is like, here's what I found on Lupin. <laughs> okay, how did I do it, Siri? Here's what I found. Okay, anyway, that's that. You keep uh, well, saying flat, Lex. Not flat, but it's just zen. Zen. It's very zen. zen. It's zen. very zen. And flat would be different, but chill. Yeah. So, oh, with, with me, I, it was weird because I I had gone into I was totally convinced that I was brought in to read for like Goemon, and something. <laughs> we were we were we were I read for all all the male parts, and um, and when I got the f call that I was cast as Lupin, I was stunned beyond because I don't do comedy up to that point. I really didn't. Um, and uh, and when we went into work, I came in with the voice that that I had tried out with, and we finished the first episode, they went, nah, it's not working. So uh, I came back the next day, and we did it again, and I did a, a, uh, a Jim Carrey version, they went, nah, I'm not good at that. I did a Robin Williams version, which is impossible, because nobody can do that but Robin Williams. And then uh, when we did it the third time, so I did the first episode three times, when we third the third time, I tried this Bugs Bunny thing. Lupin the third time? Third time. Uh, oh, I didn't get that. Uh, and so that's where the voice developed. And even then, it's drifted since then and gotten even more cartoony than it used to be. But it was... Uh, Can I tell him the story, Tony? Please, since you, I, you brought it up. Yeah. Uh, when I, I, I knew Tony was oh, perfect. Right, Lupin. Lupin. No, and right. I wanted Tony to be Lupin. And then uh, we had uh, clients. They were Japanese clients. And, you know, it's like anything. When you grow up, it's, you know, like we, we, we watch... Uh, you know, like when I was a kid, I watched Fred Flintstone or whatever. You would hear a certain voice in your head and you know... Honey! Yeah, you would, hear, you would hear the, that voice. And I think they <laughs> wanted to hear the same voice they heard when they were kids. But the problem was nobody over here really knew about that show yet when we first did the first uh, series. So uh, I just thought Tony was perfect for it. And 
they would bring, poor Tony, I, he put up with us so much, uh, this thing is like so hot, what's the deal? Um, he put up with it's so you, much, uh, uh, you know, with these guys, he was very patient. And Tony would come in, and the, the clients would be there, and Tony would do it one way, and then they would, they would look at me and go, no, 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 faster, faster, faster. So I said, Tony, they want it faster, so Tony would do it faster. And they go, no, 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 faster, faster, faster. I said, Tony, they want it faster, so you go faster, faster. They go, no, no, like this, and then they would play this thing for me. Now, I'm not, I'm not trying to offend anybody, but the Japanese sounded really, talk about flat, it sounded really fast. It sounded like, it sounded like that to me, you know, to my ear. It's so like a I Tibetan would, chant. So it was like going fast, and I said, no, Tony, they want it like this. So Tony would do it like that. He would do it like flat, like they go, no, 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 faster, faster, we do it faster, faster. We go through this whole thing again, and they go, no, like this, and they play it again. This one on like all day long and I'm going I have Tony I have no idea what they want <laughs> just just go in and do it and Tony did it and they for a long time they said no no he's not right he's not right and finally I we convinced him uh, Tony and I together we got a, we got him on our side and I, I got to tell you I can't imagine anybody else playing this part as no well way. as Tony is no. thanks, I was, thank you because I was sure I was getting fired on that third day oh. <laughs> Thing. No, it was it was crazy, and it just shows you how crazy stuff like this happens, you know. And, and a lot of shows, it's just you know, not just ours, but a lot of shows that happens like that. And then and then the guy gets it, or you know, somebody's cast in something and he can't make it, so they throw somebody else in. And then you're looking at it, and go, how could they? You know, you can't imagine it with anybody else. Yeah. In that part. And they had a Tibetan monk on hold for a while, just waiting. Or a didgeridoo, you know, in a pinch. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it was out in the hall. It was a pain in the ass. Oh my God. <laughs> Headlines tomorrow. Richard Upcar, racist. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> okay. but we've all known that. <laughs> oh, 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 no. no, we don't. So I, I came up with Fujiko, and thank God, Richard, you guys, you guys went for it. It was you and... Who is the producer? The Ken Brothers were the producers. Ken Dewar and Hiraway. Okay. Oh, Hiraway. Right. Yeah. yeah, but it was Ken Dewar and Hiraway. Hiraway, uh, uh, who I went on to worked with her on quite no, a few No, it was originally shows. done by Pioneer. Pioneer came in. They wasn't Hiraway was producing it, yeah. though. Yeah, but it was Ken. No, it was Ken. Ken was principal. It was Ken Dewar and Ken Ito were the two kids. Uh, right back after mm. these guys are finished. <laughs> and after then they played this tape for me and went like that. Ring, 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 ring. But I decided to throw a little... Um, in it, when you're coming up with characters, there's a few things that you can do to like, sort of create something. And one of those things is um, to kind of lift from other famous characters or other famous actors. Like, I decided to throw a little Marilyn Monroe twist on it. Yes. And it's not like when you listen to her, you go, oh, God, that's so Marilyn Monroe, but there was just something about it, like something about the delivery and who she is. What? Do you guys know who, you, do you know who Marilyn Monroe is? Yes, of course they do. I don't know. Gentlemen prefer blondes. She was kind of a femme fatale in, a, in, her, mm -hmm. in her day. So, um, so yeah, that's how I kind of came up with the character. But, but she's sort of like Tony has said, you know, She's, it's sort of evolved. evolved from there. But she, it's still the same character, but I don't do as much of that anymore. Affected sort of vocal. But you too, I knew you were perfect. All you guys, I, I knew all of you guys are perfect for the parts, and I, I, if it was up to me, I just said, boom, that would be it. But we had to go through the, all the... The rigmarole. The producers and the whole Magoo. But. <laughs> With me, uh, we couldn't find. I didn't. I didn't want to play a character in the show because I, I just wanted to concentrate on directing it. To be honest with you, and I said I didn't. I, I didn't want to, you know, cast myself or you know even audition for anything. But what happened was we had about 200 guys come through the door for for Jigen, and they didn't like any of them. So finally, one day they're looking at me. They said, "Richard, you go in the booth and read it." So. <laughs> And the rest, as they say, is history. <laughs> so I, I read a couple lines, and they said, we found our Jigen. So I was, at first I said, I don't want to do the character and direct, but now I'm so glad it worked out that way, because he's one of my favorite characters, and it, and it turned out to be a really, really You're cool perfect movie. for him. Oh, yeah. Thank you. They played How a hard tape is it for to me, direct though. yourself, though? That, well, they played a tape for me, it went ring, 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 
It does kind of sound like a didgeridoo. <laughs> So this is like a big reunion for all of us yeah. because we haven't really seen each other in the flesh. Yes, in all flesh. together like this. Couple years. Oh. Thank you guys. Seriously, <laughs> it's like so nice to see the people you work with in the flesh. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna get sick of them after tomorrow, but uh, okay, we're all back nice. recording at home next week. So. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Freddy Krueger. Yes. <laughs> so we started down this road a little bit, and starting with Michelle. Many consider, you know, Fujiko a femme fatale. What yes. do you describe her as? Well, I mean, she is a femme fatale. Hot. She's a she's an opportunist. <laughs> she's. Nesta. I ain't she's, saying she's a gold digger. She messed it with no broke broke. Uh, she's misunderstood. I don't think so. Yeah, everybody understands. No, not misunderstood. Yeah, you pretty no. much know it. Yeah. We, we the only one who doesn't seem to get it is Lupin. So. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, well, that's because Lupin's thinking with something other than his brain. <laughs> pretty much. Um, I mean, uh, she's a femme fatale. Uh, there's, she is the original. She is the femme fatale. Yes. Right. The OG femme fatale. And that leads into. Richard, what do you think of, how would you describe your character? How am I a femme fatale? I mean, <laughs> I don't know if we got enough time for that. <laughs> My character, well, he's, uh, you know, the thing I really like about Jigen is uh, he has a very dry wit and he doesn't take any crap. And I really like that about him a lot. I think he's just really a fun character. He, uh, he's really stuck in his ways. Uh, um, and, I, you know, I just... For me, and I think for all of us, I can hopefully speak for all of us, these characters, because we've been doing them so long now, it, it's, like a, it's like a really comfortable coat. You know, you just put it on, it just feels really good. It's worn in, and it feels nice, and it just, these characters are so uh, like second skin to us now at this point that I think we just, you know, we really enjoy playing these characters. And it's really fun to see the different uh, places they go and the things that happen. There's a great scene in Six with with the Zenigata and Jigen, and they meet. You, you recorded yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they meet in a bar, and it's it's just an amazing scene. And you're going, this is like this is like out of a live action movie. I mean, it just it's such a great scene and very cool. Yeah, I was like, so when do they shoot each other? Why are they sitting there just yeah. drinking with each other? But it was really cool. Yeah, it was well, really a cool. Don't scene. Miss I think Zenigata just wants to be. Part of the gang. I think any guy that wants to be a thief. Let's be honest. Well, he just he wants to be. You know, he's got FOMO. He's just you know he's just got respect for himself. That's <laughs> I would always say, what is any guy without Lupin? What is it? What is he without Lupin? Yeah. He is nothing without Lupin. I think Zenigata's whole deal is he doesn't really want to catch Lupin. Because then what do you do? Then the series is over with, and who wants to? There's nothing to watch. But he doesn't <laughs> really want to catch him because it's always that elusive goal. And, you know, I think if he caught him, he'd be disappointed. Well, That's why it's like there's moments when he does, he does think he has him, and then it's just like. He kind of subtly lets him slip through his fingers, and it's like, uh-huh, we'll, we'll fight another day. <laughs> it's kind of like Batman and the Joker, really, you know? It's just like they're, they're just these arch nemesis, and they just keep, you know, battling each other. And We'll it, fight another day by screaming loop on at the top of your lungs, right. blowing yeah. out some right. speakers. <laughs> I, think, I think Zenny got a uh, part of him really loves Lupin and I think he yeah. admires him and, and, and respects him in many ways because he, you know, he's just so clever and gets away with so much stuff. But he, you know, he, I think if you ask Zenigata, he would probably tell you he would like to catch Lupin. But, yeah. Uh, well, and the funny thing is, is whenever another inspector comes on the scene, he gets possessive of Lupin. Yeah. He's all like, I know more about Lupin than you do, so step back. <laughs> Maybe not in that voice, but... Thank yeah, God. <laughs> pretty close, pretty close. That was the voice we first hired you to play. Right, right. they're like going, okay, can you try to... No, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Lex, Tony, do you have any thoughts on your characters? Yes, uh, Goimon, I love the fact that he's so zen, he, that he's just so chilled out. It, doesn't, it takes a lot to rattle him. And he's also very honorable. He's got a noble sense to him, like, you know, tradition. Um, he's also very sharp, like his uh, Zantetskin, yeah. Uh, he, uh, 
Yeah, he's very calm and cool and collected pretty much through every situation. And he, he goes along with these guys, too. Like, if they're saying, like, we all got to dress up as Lupin, you know, he's like, okay, you know, and he puts on the Lupin outfit, you know. And uh, there's a tender side to him, too. I think in one of the story arcs, he f actually falls in love, and, you know, you can see that side well, of him, didn't, too. Well, didn't he and Fujiko have a thing? I think they dated a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, that was nice. Which is interesting. <laughs> dated. That was nice. <laughs> they, they watched Netflix and chilled a little bit right, together. Right, yeah. 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 Uber uh, Eats. <laughs> they ordered Uber Eats and watched a little bit of Netflix. And it has to be ramen, though. Ramen, yeah. Uh, Lupin, um, Lupin to me, he's, he's always the smartest guy in the room who pretends to be the dumbest guy in the room, which makes him the guy that, that everybody is, he makes him unexpected, and, and that's, I think that's why he succeeds. Plus, he has, he has big brass ones, just really big ones, and, um, and has no fear. He's, he's like, there's, there's no sense of uh, hesitation. He is all in on everything he does, and that's what makes him successful. Also, no shame. No shame, no, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Zero shame. Speaking of well, no shame. Well, at first, at first, you know, when we first were playing him back in the day, I mean, it was, it was very fun and everything, but as the, as the series have, pro have progressed over time, I mean, Lupin becomes a killer a, a little bit here yeah, and there, and, and things are, are not quite, it gets a little bit darker, and so it's been fun trying to balance the two sides to keep them both happening at the same time. Yeah. time so, yeah. So, Richard, and this is for everyone, what has been your favorite moment recording so far? Working with these guys. I love these guys. Aww. It's the greatest cast in the world. I'm so honored to be working with them. <laughs> and uh, they just knock it out of the park every time. And I'm never disappointed. Uh, they're just amazing, all of them. And Tony, I've tried to break him several times, and he just he won't break. <sighs> he just will not break. <laughs> He's just unbelievable. I mean, it really, you, you, I mean, all of us work really hard, but Tony's got like four times the dialogue all of us do, and he just, he just goes through it. it just, it's an amazing thing to see. But, uh, fun to do. Yeah, we, we all love the show, we, uh, and it's just so much fun working with these guys. I can't, I can't imagine a better cast than this for anything, to be honest with you. Nice. Yeah, ditto. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's great. Again, you know, thanks for having us, because this has been a blast seeing these guys. Yeah. And, um, you know, it just, it, you know when you've got that on your schedule and you've got Lupin on your schedule, either Tony or Richard's directing, and you're like, this is just like, this is a fun. It's, it's a couple hours of fun, and you're like, you do some work and crack a lot of jokes and uh, listen to Richard tell you about jokes he's told you a hundred times before, but they're still funny. <laughs> what the hell? What? <laughs> hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Did I tell you the one about the... That's what she said. <laughs> Milk the cow. <laughs> I, I, I also third that. It's, it's getting... It's the, really the best part of the show is not only getting to play these characters, iconic characters for so long that are really our second skin. You know, it's like... I feel like I, I live in her or she lives in me in, in some instances. Um... And also, I love, like, when I'm recording with Richard, he's so reactive to Fujiko. Like, anytime she does something really awful, which is most of the time, <laughs> he's like, oh, my God. <laughs> awful. Like, he just, I get the commentary. <laughs> you think <laughs> I would know that by awful. now? Awful. Right? I'm like, Richard, yeah, like, he would be used to it by now. But it just gets him every time, and I love it. I like that, too, because every time something happens, you're going, I can't believe that happened. I said, Richard, it's happened every episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he has amnesia. Yeah. This sucks me in, like, you know, <laughs> and the audience. Sleep. <laughs> and then you wake up, and it's all brand new again. <laughs> yeah, for, for me, it was the, uh, the, the, the uh, I mean, all of that. I, I, I want to add my name to that, too, what you guys all said. But uh, specifically, there was a couple episodes we were doing back in the day, back in the original Red Jacket series, where it just lent themselves to a lot of outtakes and fun, and we had the time to do it. Yeah. And it was specifically the one about the guy whose head looks like a... a, a little, penis. little brain? Yeah. Alex, Alex. <laughs> 
and those were my favorite sessions when we would start and we'd start ad libbing and take off and you use all that stuff in your panels now. <laughs> do you still have that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, There's a bloopers when, panel for bloop on this. When is that oh, happening? I will, oh, I will give you here. a private screening, Michelle. Oh. <laughs> Anytime. But they do have some good bloopers on YouTube. Yeah. If you look up bloop on bloopers, they have some really funny ones. So that was my favorite. Those, those favorite days, those days where we could really play. Well, I have to say something real quick. I have to interject. We started doing these really outrageous outtakes, and they're really hilarious. And then one day, the producers came in, and I, I said to the engineer, I said, play him the outtakes. And the guy's looking at me like, oh, my God, really? I said, yeah, play him the outtakes. So I, I thought in my head, they'll either really love this or they'll fire me. So, <laughs> so I, I said it could go either way. So they played the outtakes, and they were rolling on the floor. But what I, they did do, I didn't expect, was they said, you have to come up with outtakes for every show now. And, and we want to put it in the, you know, as an Easter egg and all of the, uh, the videos. I said, oh, that's great. Uh, are you going to pay me anymore? No, we're not going to pay any more. <laughs> but you've got to write all these, these outtakes and do it. Sometimes the actors will come up with them. Sometimes I'll, I'll t you know, egg them on a little bit and say, say this. But, uh, yeah, th those were a lot of fun. And we, we had a blast doing it. I mean, them. the whole idea with the outtakes is that it's like, you're just coming off yeah. with it. Yeah, it's like no, but spontaneous. But they want me to write them. Most of them are there, there is a there is, <laughs> there is a rule when you're dubbing with outtakes, though. It has to sync. Yes. The actor has to make it sync. If it doesn't sync, it's not good. Yeah, it's, it's no not good. good. It's not funny. But you have to make it sync perfectly, and then it works. Yes. <laughs> one of my fun times was we were doing, uh, I don't know what episode it was, but one of the characters kind of reminded me of Christopher Walken. All right. So I was like, yes. we should just do the voice as Christopher Walken. So it was like, Lupin, you know, it was like, it was, <laughs> and that was another problem because they loved your Christopher Walken so much. They go, let's have a, you know, a guest star every episode now. And I'm going, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> you could have done most of them. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so Doug, can you wow. think of any other fictional police detectives that would be an equal or great partner for Zingata? Be a great partner. Well, you know what? What's the question? My three-year-old this morning said, uh, Zenny got to need a dog. <laughs> so I'm going with Aww. dog. You're Paw Patrol? Pa my <laughs> son is Chase from Paw Patrol. He was literally, we were in the car, and he was in the passenger seat with me, and he's like, you need a dog, Daddy. And he calls me Zenigata, which is kind of dope. So. Oh, that's so. So I got my son as a dog. As is my he gonna be fucked up when he grows up? <laughs> so fucked up. Zenidata. No, but you know I, he has Yada as his little sidekick minion. I don't. I think uh, Zenny's kind of a, a one one shot kind of guy. He I think your dog's light. name I don't should think he be. Can do a part of, a dog, maybe. Davida. I think a dog. Zenny got a Davida. Deputy dog. Deputy dog. Deputy dog and a Vita. I like that. So the dog should sound like this. I'm going to be hearing that for the rest of the weekend. Thank you for that. Wait till someone asks you to write that as part of your autograph. We're going to be hearing that for the rest of our lives. We will be hearing that for the rest of our lives. I'm going to get back to the office. How is the panel? In your nightmares with Freddy Krueger. How do you spell that? <laughs> you spell it like ringing. <laughs> oh, there's a G at the front. It's a double G. Oh. Ring -ing 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 -ing. All right. There's regrets, but not really. <laughs> so, Lex, as we know, going on sword can cut everything, anything. Mm -hmm. If That's you had the sword, what would be what would be the first thing you cut? Well, it would have to be a worthy item, and no, no more of these unworthy items being cut. <laughs> um, but it, I'd probably try to just you know keep it sharp by cutting a few diamonds. That's what comes to mind. Like just you know. No, I want a card coming at me. I'm just gonna you know cut it. Well, I could do that. That's oh. easy. Going going on, you know, a car could be a, jumping off a ramp, and he'll cut it into 16 pieces, and it'll all just like fall away. So that's easy stuff, but like impenetrable stuff, like a, a huge safe at a, a big bank that has gold bullion inside, just like whoosh, whoosh, make a pizza out of it and pull the pieces, eat some food, nice. eat some gold. A funny one, and I think it was part one where you cut something up in the air and you're like doing your, your cool thing where you're returning the, you know, the sword to its sheath and then something that falls on your head and knocks you out. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, do you believe there is a better marksman, fictional or real, than Daisuke? <laughs> Never. 
Okay. Well, that that was that was very definitive. If so, who? Well, that's his thing. I mean, that's his that's his deal. You know, he's a, he's a crack. any gun except for these newfangled things, right? Crack uh, marksman. Yeah. No, he, he and he's old school gun gunman. And, uh, you know, he's, he's very good at what he does. You know, I'm great with the gun, Goyamon's great with the sword, and Lupin's the brains, and Fujiko steals everything from us. <laughs> I was going to say something Fujiko keeps else. us poor. <laughs> sex appeal is weaponized. Yes. yes. He's weaponized sexy. <laughs> <laughs> so I got two for Tony, because Tony. Okay. Two for two for Tony. Two for Tony, yes. T- so two and two They don't know Tony. that. You definitely don't know that one, Richard. Because I don't know that one. But you don't know that either. No. Is there anything Lupin can't steal? Ah. Oh. Well, he was going for the moon, but Gru beat him to it. So I'm going to say the sun, because he just can't hold it in his hands. <laughs> what about Fujiko's heart? Ah, I can't seem to steal that. Well, you know, I think in a way... That's not true. He has Fujiko's heart, yep. but she just likes other things more than her heart better. <laughs> well, there was, there's a little bit of confusion behind that, I think. Well, she tried to kill Lupin. Well, yeah, I, but that was, after, after, time. that was after you, like, dumped me and got married to somebody else. That's true. Well, you do what you do, you know? Just saying. <laughs> Well, you know, <laughs> that's what happens. The second question is, I and several others have described Lupin as a goober. Do you think it's real or is that just the act to catch people off guard? I don't think there's anything about Lupin that's, that's accidental. Everything is designed to show him off, to, to, to best the other person, to, to be smarter than the other person in the room. And you know that because there are certain scenes where he kind of drops it for just a, b- a brief second. And, and you can see that he's actually a little bit upset. And then he's, he's back to being the loop on he is. So no, I don't think he's a goober. I think it's all very calculated. It's part of the plan. What's the plan? Don't know. We'll figure it out. Not being a goober. <laughs> Richard has a plan at me, and I don't like the way he's looking at me. But... <laughs> That's a different kind of question. So, Michelle, Fujiko can really do everything everyone else can do in the crew. Mm -hmm. And as a one-woman show, is there anything she can't do? Is there anything Fujiko can't do? I don't think so. And the reason I say that is because she is constantly surprising me. Like, every every episode, like, all of her different... um, you know, disguises, and she flies planes, like she can fly a plane. Uh, She's flown a plane off of a naval ship, like she's pretty badass. So I would say if she doesn't know how to do something, she's gonna learn it, to do it. Because she wants whatever it is that, whatever the heist is, she's gonna do whatever it takes to get that. Well said. Thank you. It would be interesting for them to do a, uh, I mean, they, they do touch upon it from time to time, the backgrounds of these characters, but it would be really kind of fun to really see uh, the germination of these characters, where they actually came from, where their training was, how they, I mean, like, you know, Goyamon's a, a trained uh, samurai, but uh, it, it's, it would be interesting to see the, uh, the evolution of these Police characters. Academy. Yeah. Well, we have, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Fujiko has a woman called Fujiko Mine, which is kind of her backstory. Yeah, so she got that. I know I was in a garden now. You one. didn't. <laughs> that's right, we were in Texas. And I together. forced myself on you. <laughs> what? Yeah, that's true. That's true. You haven't Thank seen the you. show? Oh, in that show? You not seen the show? Oh, yeah, that's right, you did. Michelle's going, in real life you did that? <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> no, we, we all went out for dinner at a steakhouse. I don't remember that part. <laughs> Not paying attention. <laughs> no. <laughs> Remember I said to you. <laughs> oh, I see. That's like a hip, hypnotic thing. You guys are all hypnotized. <laughs> Richard is hypnotizing you. Because <laughs> Richard's cracking me up even. <laughs> Do you think the crew will ever stop stealing, plotting, doing shenanigans? Hope not. You're going to nope. go into charity work very soon, I think. <laughs> you know, this is, that's the cool thing about Lupin, though, really. You know, he's supposedly this thief and criminal, raw criminals, but ultimately, 
If you watch the shows, he's always helping somebody. He's always saving somebody. And when he steals, generally, he steals from really horrible people, like really bad, you know, mafia characters. He's like Robin Hood. Yeah, he kind of is like Robin Hood. He keeps the money, but he saves everybody else. That's <laughs> I mean, he does. He does help people, and he's he's really kind to to people in many cases. So, uh, even the even the character Goemon was based on, which was a real Goemon Ishikawa, was like Robin Hood of the times. He would steal from the very rich and evil, and he would give to the poor, and he gave it all away. And then once he was caught by the emperors, um, he was boiled alive. That's how he met his fate. He and his son were boiled alive, and if you look, you know, look him up, you see there's pictures from you know people who drew pictures of it, and he was holding his son above his head oh. while he was boiling alive. Horrible. Oh, that's fun. a downer. I'll remember that fun story. stuff. All right, good night. Thanks. Thanks for that, Lex. Have a great day, everybody. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Thanks for. Uh, I'm always trying to player. cheer people up with that one. <laughs> so you think you got it bad? Think about Goemon Ichikawa the first. Oh my God. <laughs> they they served him with a side of drawn butter. They called him Stew. Oh, no. oh. <laughs> oh that hurt. Uh, <laughs> Stu Ishikawa, I love that guy. <laughs> he was a good guy. Uh, oh, that's horrible. <laughs> that is horrible. It is, but it's true. It's, it's nice to know that they're based off of people who did good things. How screwed up is humanity that they would boil somebody alive? Seriously, I mean... Oh, I'm sure there's been way Plenty of stories. Things. All kinds of crazy stuff that people do to people. It's just so weird. I don't get it. Kind and loving to each other, okay? Yes. See, this is how Richard is We'll try to tilt the balance back over. <laughs> and touch I can't believe it, huh? somebody's hand. Keep going. The Keep world going. We're, we're digging it. We're digging it. <laughs> if, if you can. can. I think that's what you're saying. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank I you. wasn't properly oh, we're warned like or prepared for this. Yes, exactly. <laughs> They didn't tell us we would have to sing. I wasn't properly warned or prepared for this <laughs> yeah. panel. Sorry, guys. Where's our orchestra? <laughs> Let's hear from the, in the pit. audience. So before we start wrapping up. Before Lex uh, bummed the hell out of all of us, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thanks, Lex. I wanted to share with the guests and everyone in the room that I've the been going to panel Throw me in the boiling water now. conventions Sorry. a long, long time. Yes. And this convention had more Lupons than I have ever seen. Yeah. yeah. Woo! Would you oh, look great? Hey, can we get all the Lupons to stand up, please? Yes. Or any Come of the characters. Yeah. Any Lupons. Yeah. Any Lupons. Yeah. Any Lupons. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look at all those yeah. Lupons. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> there we go. There's oh, that. Yeah. Uh, there's yeah. the chicken. Any Fuji Cakes? Any Fuji Cakes? Any Fuji Cakes? Oh, oh, Fuji Cakes. cakes. <laughs> you have a Goemon in the house? Any Goemon in the house? No, no Goemon. <laughs> It's a hard one. <laughs> He's in the Thank corner slitting so his wrist. Well, if you didn't, he was going to be here, Rex, but he got boiled. <laughs> yeah. He's in a cauldron in the hallway, boiling alive. <laughs> he heard about the boiling and left because, you know, oh, yeah. so kind of bummed us all out. Horrible. It's okay. <laughs> but speaking of Fuji cakes, <laughs> does she want to come up and tell us about something happening after this? Mandy? Um, Fuji cakes. Fuji cakes. While we're waiting for that, I just wanted to say it's really awesome to meet everybody. This is my first time at Anime NYC, and a lot of you have come by my booth, you know, down there, and it's really awesome to meet you and know how much you love the show and everything. It makes, yeah. a, it makes a big difference for me personally for being sure. here, so thank you. And if I haven't met you yet, come say hi at some point. Fuji cakes. Fuji cakes. Gee. All right, so what are we doing here? Wait, what is that? We can't see it. We can't see it. So after this panel, in panel room four, we have a little premiere for something, don't we, Mandy? Uh, yeah, we are doing the English dub premiere of Prison of the Past. Yeah. Cool. So if you want to hear more of these guys, go down there. Yes. <laughs> Please join us. And I also heard there's some uh, gifts and prizes and yeah, things. Yeah, there is a trivia, and uh, if you are bad at trivia, we are also giving away these lovely masks. Oh. I want one. Giving out some masks. I want one, too. Maska. Do we get masks? Like, Everyone but You have to answer the trivia question. Everyone but me. Michelle really wants a mask. I, I am all want the mask. trivia we question. Masks. We should wear masks. We should. We probably should. We will. We will. We will. We will. After we're done talking. And I haven't microphone. seen anybody's lower face since the con, so it's nice to see you guys. <laughs> Your lower face? Oh, my 
Yeah. Right. As opposed to your upper face. Right. That I can do with that. That doesn't make any sense. Would you like, I could wear my mask like this. Oh, my God. <laughs> Some people she, do that. Oh, Is she wearing wear it wrong? You need face. to go to mask wearing school. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so now that Mandy has joined us, do you, would you like to you ask into? the guests anything? First off, how dare you? How dare you? You look fabulous. Yeah, you do. You do. You do. You look great. Can we take a picture together after? Yeah, you should oh, absolutely. absolutely do that. Fabulous. Is she oh, taking that for me? You put me on the spot. She yeah, I didn't warn her about this, but we got five minutes left, so. <laughs> take an audience. How questions. about one question from the... Oh, go ahead. Oh, no. Because I was going to ask if you were a tree, what tree would you be? But oh. I don't think anyone... Is there anybody in the here. audience who has a question? <laughs> <laughs> Dude okay. with the thing in the back like, that like shot up real quick. Like a tree and leaf. So who's going to pick? Uh, can you choose? Oh, you got a mic up here, bro. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Right, right up in the middle. Right in the middle. You can get in a line if just a few of you, maybe three of you. You gave them. First, yes. four, first four people get in line. Sure. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Yes. Go ahead. Four, four people. people have a question. Go, One, go, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's so it. Just Guys. four people. Four people. All right, oh, that's me? it. Yeah. All right. First of all, you guys are awesome to dub. So Thank you. <laughs> That. Santa's looking for you, by the My way. My question is specific because I don't know if you know about One Piece, but there's a sniper named Usopp, and I just want to know who will win in the 1v1 snipers only, Usopp or Jigen? Jigen would win. No uh, yeah, Jigen's, Jigen. Jigen's been around. We don't even know who you're talking about, but Jigen would win. <laughs> uh, just out of experience alone, because he's, you know, Jigen. 50 years old. Yeah, he's yeah. with a slingshot. Jigen, Jigen, Jigen you that old? Win. Well, this show's been around for that long. <laughs> it's kinda, you know, he's been at it a long time. All right, just wondering. Thank you. I've survived. Okay, thank you for the question. What's yours? Hello. Oh, so I wanted to at least know with all the material that you have, what has been like one of your favorite lines that you've done from Lupin, and if there's another one that you like from a different property that you've done? Goimon Ishikawa is in the house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I just like it whenever my line makes me say Fuji Cakes. I like that. Yeah, and, yeah I was going to say. What are you doing, Fuji Cakes? Yeah, that's, I mean, honestly, that would be my favorite line, and I don't even say it. <laughs> I'd say mine is Lupin. <laughs> <laughs> that's not how you say it. <laughs> Lupin, that broad's nothing but trouble. <laughs> it just tripped over my... <laughs> 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 it's going to haunt me like that well in my dreams. <laughs> See, y'all get that one, but they don't. Oh Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Is it over? Are we done? Everyone's oh, leaving. Uh, no. We got Hi, two more questions. Hey, Hi. Go to the premiere. Go get a seat at the premiere if you're not. Oh, doing gotcha. Well, What's your question? Um, I was just wondering, I would, you guys have done such amazing voice work, but is there like a dream role that any of you, any of you still want to hope to provide your voice role for? I want to play Spike Spiegel in Cowboy Bebop. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Isn't that Steve Bloom? Which is never going to happen, yes. Yeah, no. I actually read for it against Steve Bloom, and he won. So, oh. yeah. <laughs> uh, I hope to... I, my goal and dream is to book a lead role on a animated series, original animated series. Yeah, I'd love to be on Family Guy. Oh, nice. Yeah, that'd be fun. Uh, Peter Griffin here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, writing my own stuff, baby. Mm, I'm writing my own cool. ticket there. That's the nice. way to do it. Stuff. Stuff. I want to do any job where I have to go. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I knew it was going to be Richard. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks for the question. And finally, well, um, last but not least. Hello. The long-term voice actors, is there anything you think has to be done to like, maintain the same voice for a long time, like for a long series like this or Bleach or other long-running series? Booze, alcohol, <laughs> yeah. cigarettes. No. Not your vocal, weekend. Vocal exercises. Yeah. And, and I think I'm going to um, adopt the didgeridoo. <laughs> <laughs> but also one of the nice things is if we haven't been doing the part for a few months and we come back to do it, there's usually a vocal reference that they can play us that right. we can get to right away. They'll yeah. just, Here's what you did last time. No, and after 18 years of playing these guys, it comes back very quickly. Yes, it it does. really yeah. does. Um, but yeah, that's what we do, and the vocal health thing, making sure that we're, we continue to stay sounding like we have for the last 20 years. So. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. With that, we're going to wrap up, guys. All right, go, let's see go see the, the premiere. premiere, everybody. Thanks see you for coming. Thanks for coming, everyone. It's <laughs> <laughs> the dance that really got it for me. Thank you for watching this video. I am Invader Zim, and I traffic in doom. 
And so, if you do not subscribe to this channel, you will have doom that befalls you by me, Invader Zim.